Here I'm going to look at moles specifically in relation to concentration of solutions and in terms of gas volumes and particles of gases. So to start with we're going to look at what is a concentration. So for example if I had a beaker full of water then I started to add a solid particle to that. The more particle that I added that dissolved fully the higher the concentration of solution. If you think of dissolving blackcurrant into a drink if you have a the more blackcurrant you put in it the more concentrated the solution some of those solutions that you can buy in the supermarkets are known as concentrates so here the more substance that dissolves in the solution the higher the concentration we know that the amount of a substance in chemistry is known as a mole so therefore the concentration of the solution is going to be the number of moles divided by the volume of the solution so concentration, amount of dissolved solute in the certain volume, dm cubed, or litres, of solvent. So in terms of a formula, we just work out the number of moles of the substance we have, divided by the volume, and that gives us the concentration of solution. Sometimes when we want to work out the number of moles of a substance we have, and we know it's concentration, we just multiply the concentration times the volume. It's important to get the units for the volume right. We're not talking about centimetres cubed here, or millilitres. We're talking about decimetres cubed, which is... 1,000 centimetres cubed, which is the same as a litre, which is 1,000 millilitres. So if you wanted to work out the concentration of one mole of HCl in 500 centimetres cubed, well, it's going to be 1 divided by 500 centimetres cubed converted into decimetres, which is going to be 500 divided by 1,000. So that's equal to 1 divided by 0 0.5 equals 2 moles per dm cubed. That's the concentration. Reason for those units? Well, we have moles on top, we have dm cubed down the bottom, so it's going to be mole dm cubed, which is the same as writing mole times dm to the minus 3. For more on that, just have a look at a uh, review of indices. So, we now have to work out a concentration. We take the number of moles of a substance, divide it by the volume, making sure the volume is in decimeter cubed. We can also rearrange that to find the number of moles of a substance, given the concentration and the volume, but making sure that the units for each correspond with each other. If the amount of substance is in grams, then I first need to convert that into number of moles by dividing by its MR. Remember, if I'm dealing with a solid, the number of mole equals mass divided by m or so that's how we work out the concentration of solution it's always worthwhile converting something into the number of moles of a substance especially on the next video when we talk about reacting masses always important to work out the number of moles of a substance that you have and we can do that using concentration and this formula here where N is the number of moles, C is the concentration, and V is the volume. The next thing we're going to talk about is gas volumes. Now, in order to do that, we need to look at the kinetic theory of gases. This basically says that we treat all gas particles the same, and eff effectively we treat them like snooker balls. They just bounce off each other. And we know them being gas particles, they move randomly and collide against each other and the walls of the container. We don't really take into account any attractive or repulsive forces when we talk about the calculations involving gases for now. Okay, so we're now going to talk about Avogadro's law. So that basically tells that equal volumes of gases contain equal number of molecules at the same temperature and pressure. It actually makes our calculations involving gases fairly straightforward. So by experiment, it can be found that standard temperature and pressure, that's STP, 0 degrees Celsius, one mole of gas takes up a volume of 22.4 decimeters, well, that's 22.4 liters. Also at room temperature and pressure, one mole of gas occupies 24.0 decimeter cubed. So for that, we're dealing with a temperature around 25 degrees. Okay, pressure times volume is a constant because pressure is inversely proportional to volume at constant temperature. So this basically tells us that volume over temperature is a constant. As volume is proportional to temperature. That's at constant pressure. 
this one above is at constant temperature. We've looked at Avogadro's law already. Remember that told us that volume is proportional to the number of moles of a substance at constant temperature and pressure. So number of moles divided by volume is a constant. So if I want to combine all three, I'm going to get to a situation where I've got the volume being inversely proportional to pressure. Here, volume being proportional to temperature and volume being proportional to the number of moles. So volume proportional to the number of moles to the temperature, but inversely proportional to the pressure. So to convert our things that are proportional into an equation, we need to introduce a new constant, and that's going to be called OR. It's called the constant of proportionality. Basically, if you've got any two things that are proportional to each other, then there is usually some value that connects the two. You can think of this in terms of math when you've got a graph, for example. Okay, And if you've got this being related to this, for example, this being related to this, for example, there's something that relates them, and in this case, in maths, it's the slope of that line. Whereas here, in our equation, when we've got things that are proportional to each other, we're going to introduce a new constant called OR. It's just the gas constant that relates to the proportionality of our volume, temperature, pressure. Okay, so the gas constant OR links the connectivity, proportionality of our quantities above. So the equation becomes PV is equal to N or T. Pressure times volume is equal to number of moles times the gas constant times temperature. Rearranging that, you can see that the number of moles in any gaseous system, providing we agree that they're behaving like ideal gases, is equal to the pressure of that system times the volume divided by the gas constant, or, which doesn't change, times temperature in Kelvin. Now, they've all got specific units whereby pressure is in newtons per meter squared, volume is in meters cubed, temperature is in Kelvin, and the gas constant is joules per Kelvin per mole. So you're, if you're asked to calculate the number of moles of the system and you're given these values, you need to just plug them into the equation, but you need to be careful to use the units here. If you wanted, you can convert from pascals into kilopascals, could be a unit for pressure, and your volume then will be decimeters cubed, okay? Uh, the hardest one there probably is volume. So, if, for example, you're left, with, you're told it's four decimeters cubed or four liters. Okay, to work that into meters cubed, you need to divide by a thousand, which would be point zero zero four. So, just to show how we can actually get to the ideal gas volumes that we said earlier in the question using this equation. If I wanted to calculate the volume of one mole of an ideal gas at zero degrees Celsius and one atmospheric pressure. We need to just make sure we convert to the proper and appropriate units. So if at zero degrees Celsius, our temperature equals 273 Kelvin. Volume has to be in meters cubed. We'll deal with that in a little bit. One atmosphere of pressure is equal to 101325 Pascals. That will be given in the exam. And the gas constant would also be given in the exam. The gas constant is 8.31441 joules per Kelvin per mole. Okay, so now we can use that to work out the volume. So PV equals NRT, then volume is NRT divided by P. We plug in our values into the equation. Therefore, our volume is equal to 1 mole times 8.31441 times 273 Kelvin divided by our 101325 for our pressure, and we're getting the volume equals 0.0224 meters cubed, which, if we convert that into decimeters, is 22.4 dm cubed, which is equal to 22.4 liters. So, using our ideal gas equation, we know that one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 litres.